Believe it or not, Godzilla and the Apostle Paul have something in common. And I'm sure Paul is up in heaven laughing because I just made that comparison. Hello and welcome to Geek Devotions, the YouTube show from geeks devoted to letting people know that they are loved. I am Nathan, and before we get started, I want to thank you for clicking play on this video, and I want to encourage you to punch, punch, punch that subscribe button like Jet Jaguar to stay up to date with all of our content. And while you're at it, give this video a thumbs up and leave us a comment, because just as much as we love making these videos for you, we also love interacting with all of you. For those who don't know me, I am Nathan Marchand, a professional writer and raging nerd. I've written a lot of science fiction and fantasy books, but I've also been a YouTuber and a podcaster. You may have seen me uh, earlier this week on Extra Tuesday being interviewed with my co-author Eric Anderson of Nerd Chapel. Hey guys, I had to pause the video real quick and uh, apologize to Nathan and Eric. I dropped the ball this past week and was not able to get that episode edited in time. So, uh, yeah, that, that didn't happen. So, <laughs> But it will be up this Tuesday for you guys to check out. And uh, it was a really great interview, really great conversation about their book, The New 42. And I want to encourage you guys to check it out. There will be links down below for you to uh, get a hold of their book. And also, this Monday, Celeste's article reviewing it will be out on our website, geekdevotions.com. That said, let's get back to the devotional. Because we just put out a second devotional book for geeks and nerds. Our first one was 42, Discovering Faith Through Fandom. Today, I thought I would read an excerpt from our second devotional book, The New 42, God Terraforms All Things, but uh, can't seem to find my copy. It's gone missing. I'm not sure where it is. Screeonk. Huh? Screeonk. Oh, there it is. You little rascal, trying to hide it from me. Screeonk. Pardon me, devoted geeks. This is my little buddy, Goji-kun. Screeonk. The, normally he's a pretty pleasant fellow, but uh, he's like a bulldog. When Screeonk. he finds something he likes, he keeps it. So, uh, buddy, buddy, pal, I need that DVD in this book uh, to make this video for the devoted geeks, so, uh, I'll just take these from you. Uh, well, ho, 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 calm down, calm down, bucko, okay? Screw all right, you can, I know you love this movie, you can watch it all you want once I'm finished with the video, okay? Is that all right? Screw all Plus, the devotional entry that I'm going to read is about your big brother Godzilla, all right? Screw all okay, we cool? Screw all all righty, I'll just put you over here. Screw all and, Make sure you listen. There's some important lessons you're about to learn about, okay? Screeonk. All right. So, with the release of Godzilla King of the Monsters, which I just saw last night, it's fantastic, I thought I would read you an entry that has to do with a not only Godzilla, but a classic Godzilla film. This one, in fact. Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster from 1964. And the reason that I realized that you know, it's doubly appropriate that I read this excerpt is because not only am I a lover of kaiju, but all the monsters that are in this movie, Godzilla, Mothra, Rodan, and King Ghidorah, they're all in Godzilla King of the Monsters. So in a lot of ways, the new film is a big budget Hollywood remake of this one. So without further ado, let's dive right in, shall we? Day 36. Godzilla and the Damascus Road. In 1964's Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, the fifth entry of the Showa or classic Godzilla series by Toho, a princess disappears in an exploding plane. She reappears later as a Venusian, Martian in the dub version, prophetess for telling the coming of giant monsters. Although you would think by this point Japan would be used to having kaiju showing up, but I digress. Her prophecies keep coming true. Rodan rises from a volcano. Godzilla emerges from the ocean. But the most terrifying of all is King Ghidorah, a three-headed golden space dragon, and yes, he's as awesome as that sounds, who emerges from a crashed meteorite. This Lovecraftian beast destroyed the prophetess's civilization millennia ago, and now intends to devastate Earth. Godzilla and Rodan, though, are more interested in fighting each other near Mount Fuji. 
the larva of the insect goddess Mothra is led to the as led to the mountain by her tiny twin priestesses, the Shobajin, where she goes full tilt mom on the overgrown dinosaurs. She covers them with silk webbing to make them stop and listen to her. But despite her reminding the kaiju, giant monsters, that Earth is where they keep their stuff, they refuse to fight Ghidorah because humanity always attacks them. Desperate, Mothra decides to battle the space monster herself, much to the shock of Godzilla and Rodan. Predictably, Ghidorah's lightning-like gravity beams toss Mothra around like a toy. All hope seems lost. Until Godzilla makes a heroic charge. Rodan, too, quickly swoops in. By their powers combined! No price to anyone who gets that reference. The three-headed monster is defeated and sent running back into outer space. This was a turning point for Godzilla. After menacing Japan as an atomic force of nature for a decade, he became its new hero. For the rest of the Showa series, he would defend Japan from all manner of kaiju, robots, and alien invaders. Monsters that were once his enemies, like Rodan and Angerus, became his staunchest allies. By the 1970s, he was practically a superhero. One of the most dramatic conversion stories in the Bible is found in Acts, and like Godzilla, it came about because of an encounter with divinity. Saul of Tarsus was a Pharisee of Pharisees. Philemon 3.5. As the church grew by leaps and bounds, the Pharisees saw it as a threat to their power, so they persecuted it. In fact, Acts 7, 54-60 records the death of Stephen, the first Christian martyr, after an exhaustive speech before the Sanhedrin recounting the history of Israel that ended with him indicting the religious leaders. They dragged him out of the city and stoned him to death, though he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit, and... Lord, do not hold this, this sin against them, Acts 7, 59-60. The story ends with the first verse of, of Acts 8, and Saul approved of their killing him. There's no mention of him participating, but he certainly condoned it. He continued to, quote, breathe out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples, end quote, Acts 9, 1. On his journey to Damascus in search of Christ followers to imprison, Saul had a close encounter. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Acts 9, 3-5. He was struck blind, as one would expect seeing the face of God, and had to be led into the city. For three days he ate and drank nothing. The Lord commanded Ananias to go to the house where Saul was staying. Ananias replied, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. He has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. Acts 9, 13-14 but the Lord makes himself quite clear, saying, Go! This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings, and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Verses 15 to 16. Ananias went to Saul, placed his hands on Saul's eyes, and said, Brother Saul, the Lord, Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 17. Then literal scales, suddenly the Godzilla analogy doesn't seem so weird, does it? Fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. Immediately he was baptized and fed. In no time, he was in the local synagogues preaching Je about Jesus Christ. To say the people were baffled would be an understatement. Quote, isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among all who call on this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? End quote. Verse 21. Even so, Saul would go on to become the Apostle Paul, one of the early church's most powerful evangelists, and the author of two-thirds of the New Testament. Many of you live lives not unlike that of Saul slash Paul and Godzilla. Perhaps you were once an atheist who posed Christians at every turn. 
Maybe you were a member of another religion. You may have committed horrible sins. I once had a pastor who told me that if it wasn't for Jesus, he'd either be dead or in jail. That's why stories like this are inspiring. God, in one of the great ironies of history, took one of the church's greatest enemies and made him one of its greatest champions. He used Paul's connections, Roman citizenship, and knowledge to preach the gospel in places no one else could. Paul made several missionary journeys across the Roman Empire, planting churches wherever he went. It's because of him that Gentiles like me and most of you reading, or in this case, seeing, this know who Christ is. The same God who turned a persecutor into a preacher can do the same for you. No matter your past, God can redeem it for his glory and make you a powerful instrument in his service. To which I say, go, go, Godzilla. Wow, that's powerful stuff. Isn't it, Goji Kun? Screonk! Screonk. I agree. Your big brother is all kinds of awesome. Uh, what's that? Screonk. Screonk. Huh? You have a friend who's upset that I haven't written a devotional about his big brother? Who? Screonk. Roar! <sighs> Great. Now I have a girl crazy little monkey mad at me. <sighs> Regardless, Question of the week for you, devoted geeks from Goji Kun and I. If you could be a kaiju, who would you be and why? Would you like to be Rodan and be able to fly? Would you like to be Mothra and be friends with uh, two little twin priestesses? Let us know in the comments below. Personally, I'd like to be Godzilla, but specifically Superhero Godzilla from the 1970s. If you'd like to follow any of my personal content, you can uh, find it all on Na my author website, NathanJSMarchand.com. You'll also find links to where you can buy all of my books there. You can also follow me on Twitter at NathanMarchand7. You can also do a search for The Worlds of Nathan Marchand on Facebook to find my professional Facebook page. You can also search for me on YouTube by putting in Nathan Marchand. You should be able to find my YouTube channel that way. Until next time, stay devoted, peace and love. Screeong! I think that's Kaiju 4. See you later.